Covering an area half the size of Wales, the Falkland Islands countryside is an incredible place. In the east, wide open plains and rocky outcrops make up the landscape, while the gently rolling hills in the west are drier and warmer. And the outer islands are home to a stunning diversity of wildlife. Away from the capital Stanley and the Mount Pleasant military complex, just 400 people call the Falklands countryside their home. And just 30 of these are children. This means there has to be a very Falklands approach to rural education. In Port Howard settlement on West Falkland, Mallory is just starting her day. The settlement is a private working farm, but this isn't why Mallory is here. She is a teacher at Port Howard Infant School, and her class is the largest of the four rural schools in the Falklands. This class of eight students, like all of those in camp, is a mixed age group and Mallory must balance the needs of each of the children in her care, juggling many different tasks and subjects. I think camp education runs on being organised, especially if you're on the West, because if you want to do a topic and you need resources from town, you need to get them in the half-term holiday or in the end-of-term holiday and make sure you've got what you need. Because there's a lot of young children, they need constant attention, so I try and stagger the start points of each activity. Um, I might have the little ones reading or doing an activity that they can do independently while I get the older ones set off on their task. And once they're going and they can work independently, I'll go and move the littler ones onto a new task and they get input from me. Topic-based work is useful as it allows all of the children to focus on different skills. This term the class is looking at hurricanes in the wake of the devastating storms that hit fellow UK overseas territory, the British Virgin Islands, earlier in 2017. Mallory has a teaching assistant to help her meet the needs of her students, who vary in age from four to nine. But not every camp teacher gets this help. In fact, some teachers don't even get to speak to their students face to face. At nearby Fox Bay, Claire is coming to the end of the day with her students. At least, the students from this settlement. She now has to get ready for a very different type of lesson. Those students who live more than 30 miles from a settlement school get a unique and sometimes challenging education. Today. We've got a beautiful day here. How is it over there? By teaching over the phone, Claire is working with a student who isn't able to attend classes with other children. It takes a great deal of organisation. Resources and lesson plans are sent by post many weeks in advance, and a lot of communication is required with the child's family. Elsewhere in the world, this long-distance teaching method may have been replaced by Skype lessons and online learning. But here in the Falkland Islands, the internet infrastructure is not yet reliable or accessible enough for it to form the backbone of a child's education. The children in these isolated settlements do get face-to-face -face lessons for two weeks each term, when a travelling teacher will arrive and live alongside the student's family while giving classes to a full school timetable. While now based at Port Howard, Mallory was a travelling teacher last year and found it to be a very unique experience. And I was really lucky. I, I just loved last year. I had the best year as a travelling teacher. There's got to be a good relationship between the travelling teacher and the settlement school teacher who delivers the phone lessons. Um, and there needs to be really good communication. So the teacher who's providing the telephone lessons needs to have a really clear idea of 
what the classroom environment's like on the farm, what equipment they've got in the cupboards and, and be able to really easily know what they can and can't use. Okay, we've got this week's spelling. The travelling teacher and telephone lesson system, while being expensive to run per child and not without its challenges, does however allow young children to remain in their settlements rather than forcing families to move into town and away from their farms and homes. The small class sizes in camp means that each student gets more time with their teacher than they would in Stanley. There are some areas where camp education is lacking. Large scale arts and performances are difficult and it's hard to play hockey with just three people. The clubs that kids generally go to in town, they're not available out here. Like the sports centre and the swimming pool, you know, the hockey clubs and dance lessons. And, but the children out here have a lot more freedom. They, ha they do get a lot more attention because there's so few of them and they're so special in the settlements. Um, there's a lot of freedom out here uh, that they really enjoy. When these children reach 10 years old, they will have to leave these shores behind, as the only secondary school in the Falklands is in Stanley. Students can choose whether to live with family in town or at a government-provided boarding house, but whatever the choice, it is still a big change. There are activities each year to help kids from camp to integrate into their new classes, and to get used to a more regimented school day. Every winter we have winter school and all the camp kids are encouraged to come in for a week in town. All the camp teachers come in and they have a week together in IJS, in the school in town. Um, so they have exposure to what's going to come, you know, there's transition periods. This year they made stop motion animations and presented the projects to a crowded room of children from across the whole of camp and their family. There are also chances to meet the kids already studying in town, but on more familiar ground. Year five students get a field trip to a local farm, where all of the students from across the whole of the islands can meet and mix. There are more children on this trip than there are people in many of the rural settlements. The students are all camping at Goose Green School on East Falkland. And for some of the children from Stanley, this may be the first time that they have spent the night out of town. Trips such as these are designed to mix the camp and town children and to get everyone appreciating and learning about the Falklands countryside and history. Many camp education kids are keen to show off their wilderness knowledge and to get the often rare opportunity to play team sports with children of their own age. Being such a small island, many of the teachers here in the Falklands are not originally locals. They have been contracted from across the world, from the UK to Australia. But in these small settlements, there really is still a sense of community and inclusion. When I first got here, the, the locals in Port Howard couldn't have been more amazing. They decorated the living room and the bedroom and, you know, straight away as soon as I got here, people were coming around, right, do you need anything? They, they opened a store on a day that it doesn't open to help me out. And, you know, within a week I'd been given five chickens and a chicken coop and people are helping give me seeds to plant in the greenhouse that they've, you know, sorted for me. If the Falkland Islands was half the distance it is from the UK, I would never want to leave. Never. And I don't know if I ever want to leave now. I, I've loved it so much. Education in the Falklands may follow the English system and curriculum, but at its heart, it is very different. Family and community are at the centre of everything in the camp education model. And while many things may seem old fashioned or limited, Every effort is made to ensure that every child in the Falklands receives the same standard of education. And there can be little doubt that children in camp can benefit from the flexibility and attention that the small class sizes allow. 
Administrators in the infant school are already planning the travelling teacher routes for years in the future, as new children are being born and families are moving across the islands. The population in camp is increasing for the first time in 60 years, and camp schools are a vital part of rural life. 7.4 million pounds a year has been pledged to the education budget for the next five years. And if the camp education system is to support a growing camp population, then it is important that there is continued investment across the whole island. And then who knows, perhaps in a few years, more camp schools will have as many students as Port Howard. Fantastic. And what we're going to